but there are, but there are people that would teach on predestination different than I would. Mm -hmm. Some would exaggerate uh, uh, another point, but the point is, mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of them speaking to our people. It's important for us to have exposure to the body of Christ who completely loves Jesus. So one of the things that was unusual when I first started working for you was uh, your, you would let people teach on things that we didn't quite hold to. And, <laughs> and I was raised in a tradition where the pastor would kind of step up to the stage sometimes or the right, next Sunday right. would kind of do a rebuttal or a, a fix it. You know, we had a guy that said um, what, uh, Y2K was going to totally up and end everything. We should put a tent city down on our baseball field. And so, you know, we have all that. And we'd already had this prophetic word from Chris. It was actually one of the first big prophetic words Chris gave that I'm like, dude, that's my, you're stepping out there. He's like, Y2K is going to come to nothing. I'm like, mm -hmm. really? That is not what most of the prophets are saying. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we had this guy give, mm -hmm. uh, talk on the stage. And then when I was there, we had a guy, I won't mention his name, but he, <laughs> church was supposed to be over at 1215. He preached an offering message till 1215, then kept us there till two. And I remember I was sitting across the aisle looking like, Bill, go tell him to shut up. I mean, <laughs> go save us from this guy. You know, he, he, he keeps talking. So your, <laughs> your capacity to like let people have their ministry was uncomfortable for me. Mm -hmm. Where does that start? How do you, how do you think through that? Um, you know, even sharing the stage with people or giving people your stage who you don't agree with everything. And then how far do you let that go? Maybe some of those well, things. There's a great difference between being in a disagreement with somebody and them being in heresy. Yeah, Not everything yeah. you disagree with is heresy. And uh, so, so heresy for you would be the major, the kind of the creeds of the church? It's, yeah, it's opposed to yeah. the creeds of scripture. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, the blood of Jesus is symbolic. It's, yeah. you know, that sort of, that's that's heresy. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I, I, won't, I won't tolerate any You're of that. You're trying to say that Jesus didn't really die <clears throat> for our sins. Exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. If, if uh, uh, those who believe that, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give them ten seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. But there, are, but there are people that would teach on predestination different than I would. Mm -hmm. Some would exaggerate uh, a, a, another point. But the point is, mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of them speaking to our people. It's important for us to have exposure to the body of Christ who completely loves Jesus. Yeah. And I learned that value system from my dad. He would. He would so celebrate anyone who mm -hmm. who loved the Holy Spirit who was just this worshiper, this lover of God. They were backed by integrity and character. Their prayer lives were powerful. And he would bring these people in to minister to us. This is, you know, 40-some mm -hmm. years ago. And uh, and they would differ from week to week. And the illustration they used often, use often, is uh, one week he brought in a Catholic priest yeah. to speak on a Sunday morning, and the very next Sunday, a Baptist evangelist. So you can't get too... Yeah. different yeah. Than, than those two perspectives. But neither one in heresy. They're both Jesus Christ no, no. and him crucified. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. No, they're, yeah. both, they're both love God with all of their hearts, mm -hmm. and they're, they're doing their best to serve us as a group of people. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm going to celebrate everything they say, mm -hmm. but I, for me the priority is I get to celebrate who they are, yeah. and then I get to decipher through my view of Scripture what it is that I need to learn from them. So, aren't, aren't you afraid, though, that sometimes if we give somebody a podium that they'll go, oh, I get interested, and then I read their other book, and it was like, oh, we don't, we don't like the other book or something like that. Do you, you get worried that that'll happen sometimes? No. How come? <laughs> Anyone who's really with us is going to have a steady diet of what God gives to us. Okay. And it, they're, they're not going to... Not going to deviate. I've, I've had this happen for years. This, I ha had this happen in Weaverville as well. I'd bring somebody in, and I could tell they were touching on something that, that the church was was wondering, you know, yeah, yeah. what has Bill done? And they'll, I could feel their, their eyes will look at me. Yeah. And if I'm, if I'm sitting there in peace, mm -hmm. they're fine. Mm -hmm. They're fine. And so what I'm wanting is I'm wanting people to learn to live out of rest, out of a place of peace, in the middle of disagreement, not because we think alike, but because we are we all embrace the spirit of Christ to love and to honor, mm -hmm. to humble ourselves and to to celebrate to celebrate God what God is doing, and uh, so I I have been exposed through the years to so many people that that I disagreed with. It was uncomfortable for me too. Yeah, it wasn't, mm -hmm. but but it's not it's not it's not fatal. Yeah, it's not yeah. final. Mm -hmm. I. 
it's it's an education. Yeah. It's an opportunity to do. I, everybody says we've got to be united. Well, here's your chance to display it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and that for me, yeah. that's the higher lesson. Yeah. The higher lesson is how are we going to respond to this disagreement? Are we going to respond with the character of Christ? Can we still love and be devoted to a person? I'm going to take a love offering for him. Can he still be generous because mm-hmm. of who he is mm-hmm. or who she is instead of uh, you know what they don't agree with with us? Um, and so that's a huge part for me is, is I, want, I want more than just our agreement with a lesson. I want our agreement with, mm-hmm. with the fact that they're devoted to Jesus and they deserve our honor. Yeah. yeah. And, and you early on were saying like <coughs> you're— you, that the people of God are our sheep, that's certainly a metaphor, but that also that you're, we're trained for battle as well. So that yes. the capacity, if we only have the sheep metaphor, keep me safe, give me places, yes. you know, good clean food, good clean water. <coughs> yeah. We've missed the other metaphors of scripture where it's actually we're supposed to love God with all our mind, that we are in a spiritual battle, that we are supposed to think. We're yeah. supposed to be thinkers. And I would say the other deal is that when you, if you can't get along with your brothers and sisters in Christ and then you try to go out into the world <laughs> and to work with a Muslim, uh, you know, <laughs> Or an atheist, it's mm-hmm. you don't have the you don't have the faculty for it if you are just so freaked it's about it who's kind of coming into your environment. It's true. So that's, so that's one of the ways is we've been able to kind of how I don't raise the bar of maturity in yeah, our environment. It, it toughens us up. It does. It's it confusing is, though it's too. Confusing. I mean, so people who want church never to be confusing, that that's not us. No. no. <laughs> Sorry about that. I know, yeah. <laughs> we confuse ourselves. I'd be confused sometimes. So, like, it, that is part of the deal when you're trying to think and innovate and move ahead um, and also be faithful to Scripture. You, you do get into some interesting spots like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <clears throat> so, a, a little bit, it sounds like we have kind of a cancel culture now, and we have this political spirit. I won't share the stage with you because that tacitly says I agree with you and I'm canceling you, and, and so right. this is a way that you work against that. Yeah, absolutely. That political spirit. And that cancel that cancel culture that we're kind of seeing, but you've been doing it for a long time. It's not yeah, new. Yeah, uh, for you. No, I, I actually learned it from my dad. I mm-hmm. learned it back uh, it'd be 47, 48, 49 mm-hmm. years ago. So yeah. that's that's when I saw. I saw him illustrate it, and I saw these people because these speakers would come in because I was my dad's son, who was the pastor. Mm-hmm. I would go out to dinner with them. I would be in my parents' home when these people were there, and I could see the genuineness of their love yeah. for God and their love for people. And so it, it's like what they said that I didn't quite understand or agree with mm-hmm. just dissolved. Mm-hmm. Just, it dissolved mm-hmm. under the weightiness of the character of Christ in mm-hmm. them. Now, I think you know this about me, but I mean, I've certainly had conversations with people that have spoken in the school that, like, you're, you're more gracious and maybe won't address it. But I've had a couple times said, hey, that thing you teach about hell, uh, we're not fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if you could not, like, I love what you're bringing here. That's not for us. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, I've made those sorts of distinctions with some people that have come, where we can kind of clearly say you are you're in a in, in a doctrine like in, of that size, not yeah. one of the biggies. That yeah. we're in a different. So please don't coach our folks up in that. Yeah. And I think good speakers will come and say, "Is there anything I should stay away from?" And, and it'd be like, "Yeah, exactly. yeah, that thing you do here." Uh, that's yeah. not great. Now, I love what you say because you're like, be cautious of bringing somebody in to be themselves and then controlling them when they come in. Right. So those right. are the two things I try to hold in balance, like giving a clear message and not trying to control the speaker. But I, I, think, it's, I think it's wisdom. I don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've had it done to me. I've, mm-hmm. I went to a church once in the, in, on a Sunday morning, and the pastor said, I didn't know what you, what you did or I wouldn't have asked you to come. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm there for like three for like three Does he days. Does not have the internet? No. He, he, no this is, you know, he said, I didn't know what you did. I, I wouldn't have had you come. And I said, no. I said, okay. I said, tell me what it is you don't want me to do. Yeah. Or what you don't want me to speak on. And I am happy. And I told him, I said, I'm here for you. That's awesome. I'm here for you. I'm not here for the people. Yeah. I mean, obviously I'm gonna serve them, yeah, yeah. but my primary role is for you. So you mm-hmm. tell me. What you don't want me to do, you tell me what you don't want me to speak on, and I will honorably do whatever you say. It's beautiful. And mm-hmm. he was just silent for, seemed like forever, but it's probably only a minute. He mm-hmm. finally just looked at me and said, all right, do whatever you want. But, <laughs> but I, I, I would have had zero problem yeah. with uh, with confining my message, my, uh, you know, the ministry things, yeah. or whatever that he would object to. It's no problem. It's yeah. no problem. There's so much of Christ that you can do. You know, absolutely. Yeah, so it's not a problem. And that's something we tell some of our younger ministers, even a, a beginning question, like, is there anything that you would rather not, me not address with your yes. congregation? And so it's just a way of humbly kind of 
uh, yeah. to, uh, submitting to the leader, because like I said, we're there to serve that leader, yep. and uh, to make that leader look like a genius in exactly. front of the eyes of his people. Like if exactly. we roll in and undermine their leadership, yep. we're not helping the body of Christ at exactly. all. Exactly. No, that's right. 